Hey man, how was your day? It was alright. Continue to watch E3 today. Oh, E3. Exciting stuff. So yeah. they've done a Sony conference, yep. a Microsoft conference. Mm -hmm. Uh, so today was Nintendo, I yeah, guess? Yeah, Nintendo was great. I mean, they showed Super Mario, they had Yoshi, and they had Kirby. Yeah, it was, they had a pretty good conference today. It'd be really useful if, you know, you could get your hands on a Switch. Shut the f*** up, Mythos. What's going on, YouTube? This is Dark Legend. You're around here with special guest, as always. Wolf Brother Mythos, because you're not a baby from the channel Frost and Fist. And we are here to bring you the skinny on the Nintendo conference over at E3. Nintendo's looking really good, guys. Yeah, they had a really good conference this year, and they had, you know, a lot of titles that you would expect, but I think they all came at the right time. Definitely, and it's not a huge list of games, but it's not always the size that counts, but how you use it. Yeah, they didn't have the Microsoft, like, uh, 50 games that they showed trailers for, and a lot of them were just, like, little bitty games, like, eh. Exactly. They, they kind of, like, bombarded you with, like, so many trailers over at the Microsoft conference. Although I have to say, on the other hand though, almost the entire list is either sequels or con continuations, mm -hmm. but I feel like they're sequels and continuations done correctly. Right, and I think for Nintendo conference these are titles that they desperately needed because the Switch just came out recently, yeah. and the only big Nintendo uh, title that came out that I can think of is Zelda. So they were missing their Mario game, they were missing their Kirby game, they were, they were missing Metroid, and you know, so all of these were needed for the Switch, I think. Oh yeah. So uh, the first trailer that they showed, though, was not one of those titles, it was Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Well, well I mean, even then, though, Xenoblade 2, Xenoblade did really well. Xenoblade the last really generation. Well. It, it, was sold, it sold ridiculously well, and it was such a critically acclaimed game. I mean, I still haven't played it. It's such a big game to dedicate myself to. I just, I'm not ready for that kind of commitment. I haven't um, played Xenoblade itself, but man, I love playing a Shulk on um, Smash Brothers. Yeah, and Xenoblade looks really good. It looks like a lot of fun. It's a, it's a big game, JRPG title. It looks like, I was watching one of my friends play it, and it just looks like there's so much to do in the Xenoblade world, you know? Nice, big action of JRPG. And one of the cool things is that with that JRPG action, um, the feel of the trailer and the way each of the Xenoblade wielders have different properties and stuff, it honestly had a, the same kind of feeling that Legend of the of Dragoon had for me. Yeah, except uh, instead of like just having unique Dragoon armors, it's like every weapon they had was like a big legendary weapon that like all the, the baddies seemed to be after. And Definitely. they all had like their own special properties and everything. I thought that was a really cool, um, cool trailer. Yeah, absolutely. I'm really stoked. The story looks pretty cool. And to have a big JRPG portable on the Nintendo Switch, I love that idea because if you're like me, you, you grind a lot in a JRPG. I'm a big grinder. They called me called me a grind whore growing up because in Final Fantasy Tactics and a lot of RPGs, I would you know I love to break a game. <laughs> You know, I love to sit there and grind forever. Patience is my weapon. And you know, having that kind of patience is a, is a gift, I think. You know, a lot of people kind of make fun of me because I'd like really over level for it. But hey, I mean, I had the patience to do that and not a lot of people did. It's a hyper focus, yeah. it really is. So, um, tell them about your Persona 3 file. <laughs> so I may or may not have um, gotten the 100% a compendium in Persona 3 and gotten an omnipotent orbs for every single character and it took me forever to do. And this Gaia 3, I got the platinum trophy yeah. in this Gaia. I got level 9999 several times over and got like the, the best accessories. Maxed out, maxed every out class. weapons. Yeah, maxed out every class, maxed out every weapon. I got the platinum trophy for this Gaia 3. That took me months of just straight up grinding. So, um, and I think being able to grind and take that same game from the console and take it portable. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be a like grind whore's dream. Yeah, just take that anywhere. Take Xenoblade Chronicles anywhere and just get into whatever battles and grind up to level 99. So, um, that's another reason we we'll want this Gaia for the Switch. Um, I think it's amazing that this guy came before um, Mario, even, you know. Yeah. I think, though, it seemed like they really wanted to try to make Link more the poster boy than Mario this go around. Yeah. Let's start with the dramatic game and go into the fun game. <laughs> though, uh, though Link had his turn in the spotlight, and now it looks like Mario is going to start taking over again. Of course. Yeah. That's what he does. He's the star of Nintendo. So uh, they just gave Link his turn in the spotlight, and now, you know, now he's coming in. But anyway, so Xenoblade Chronicles looks great. Um, I'm definitely going to have to check that out once I get a Switch, once I can get my hands on one. So they're so hard to get right now. Uh, but anyway, Kirby. 
was the next one that they, Guys, uh, they showed. I have some fond, fond childhood memories playing Kirby. A, a lot of people get very nostalgic about Mario, about Zelda, but I think Kirby is one of the most nostalgic titles to me when I think back on the original Nintendo. Yeah, um, I remember. I have so many memories of us as little boys playing Mario 3 mm -hmm. and then Kirby's Dreamland. Kirby's, Kirby's Dreamland, Kirby's Adventure was definitely uh, one of my uh, favorite Nintendo games. I mean, we, we clocked in so many hours. Just a lot of fun. Um, you know, and I love the plot of the original game where you get how to get the star rods and uh, fight the nightmare cloud because it was it was a bright and colorful and fun game, you know, with cheery music, but it had this dark overtone. So it's like you were you were the, the, the light in the darkness that was trying to like push back the dark. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was really cool. Um, so it's it was a whimsical game, but it's it has its like serious overtones. And this one looks like a lot a lot of fun. You know, it looks like you can uh, kind of team up with your teammates, uh, with your with your friends, go up to four players. And even if you don't have friends, it looks like you can get like some computers to help you out. So some uh, computer controlled people to help you out. Yeah, bots. And uh, so I saw them going through like the first stage in Kirby's Adventure, you know, all polished up in modern graphics. Now fighting the tree thing, the tree boss. So they are fighting the tree boss and it was like uh, four characters fighting it and it was pretty awesome. I mean, it looked a lot more hardcore than the original one because you had like apples falling everywhere. It was crazy. Yeah, it was literally everywhere. So I'm definitely looking forward to playing Kirby. You know, it looks like fun as always, you know, and uh, being able to, to eat like, you know, the different monsters and get the different power-ups and everything I'm excited like that. to see some of these amazing powers that used to be our favorites in 3D. It looks like he combined some of those powers too because he got the sword one and then somehow he like he got fire on top of that and it changed the look of the sword and he had a fire sword. That's cool. And it was it was pretty awesome. He did this pretty awesome fire sword fire blade attack. Okay, what power are you looking forward to most seeing in 3D? Oh, what power? Um, I definitely loved um, the the spark power, the, the lightning powers, but I also really liked um, the mic. The <laughs> mic was I want to see the mic come back. Well, <clears throat> as you guys know, that I, I love to sing, so I think it was pretty awesome that you could just rock it out of the mic and damage every, and everything. everything on the screen. Some of my favorite powers I'm looking forward to seeing is UFO. UFO was awesome. And I think... Uh, the one where you turn into a tire. <laughs> I think it was a wheel. Yeah, the wheel power. Yeah, that was pretty awesome too. I felt like a transformer. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, you know, a staple is definitely the sword. I try to use a sword as, course, as often as possible. As a matter of fact, they like to play as Meta Knight. Then, you know, that's, that's going to be something I do. <laughs> um, so Kirby was shown. Metroid Prime 4 was announced. We didn't get to see anything about it though. It was just kind of like a reveal. Ah! Metroid Prime 4. Uh, I don't think I've played many of the Metroid Prime games. Um, I like playing them. I mean, it's funny. I got stuck on the first one and like <laughs> one of the first levels just because it wasn't too difficult for me. I just couldn't figure out where to go. <laughs> yeah, that happens. But at least now we have YouTube. So it's true. thank you, YouTube, and all those people that uh, show us what to do. But anyway, so yeah, Metroid Prime 4 was announced. I'm, I'm pretty excited to see stuff about that. I kind of called it because uh, people were talking about what I, I expect to see at Nintendo conference, and I was like, well, we haven't heard anything from Metroid in a while. Yeah, so. I remember you talking about it before they even had the conference. I'm hoping it'll have a multiplayer for, form, because the last, um, you know, when the, three, uh, when the DS first came out, Metroid Prime Hunters, oh, that yeah. was one of my go-to games. Cloud and I used to play that all the time. Yeah, that was a lot of fun, uh, especially on the Switch when you can take it anywhere anywhere with you and kind of like go multiplayer against, or even if they have like a cooperative mode where you can go with somebody. That'd be cool. That would be really cool. Um, while I re I'm remembering it, because uh, I don't have it on my list, but uh, remember I'll that Pokemon, Pokemon uh, Pokem Tournament was announced for the Switch. I don't, I don't know if it was announced. I, I think they announced it before, but they kind of talked a little bit more about it. But yeah, the, it's going to be an upgrade to the original Pokemon Tournament. They're going to have more characters in there, which I know I, I'm always for a bigger roster, a bigger right. selection of characters. And uh, it's going to be more polished, and you know, you can take it on the go with you and uh, fight your, your fight you know, against your friends. That would be cool. In Pokemon Tournament, so that's cool. They also announced that they're, they're currently in development of a mainline RPG for Pokemon. That sounds on awesome. the Switch. So yeah, that much, I'm excited about that because I think it's about time that Pokemon kind of stepped out of the um, the 3DS scene. I'm sure that they're going to continue making them for the 3DS, but I think it's time to see like a bit, a little bit more of an evolution of Pokemon. You know, having a 
an RPG made for a bigger console. Yeah. You know, I, I think that would be awesome. I'd play the crap out of that. I mean, I love Pokemon. I'm, I'm a big Pokemon fan. I'm, so I'd be excited to play that. <clears throat> so, you know, those were announced. Yoshi was announced, and that game looks great. It's very cute. It's very cute, and like it reminds me of Yoshi's Woolly World, and um, I had wanted to play that on the Wii U uh, before uh, I didn't have a Wii U anymore. Thank you, Alyssa. Appreciate it. Um, but yeah, uh, Yoshi's Woolly World looks great, um, and, th and this Yoshi game does as well because everything you can like see the material that they're, that they're kind of like using for every bit of, of uh, like Yoshi looks like he's made of wool. And then, like, every, you know, there are things that look like they're just made out of folded paper. You know, and they look accurate texturally. And, 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 and what it reminds me of is a lot of paper crap Mario. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but with more textures, and, you know, there's cardboard, and some things seem like they're made out of tin cans. Yeah, or even if something's, something's made out of rock, you can definitely tell that it's made out of yeah. rock. It's just like, everything looks so well textured in Yoshi. So, I mean, I, I think it looks great, and it's like a Mario game, you know, like a like out of a platformer, you're collecting coins and everything, so, um, I mean, I would definitely get Yoshi. I think that'd just be a fun game to, to kind of relax slash rage at. <laughs> My brain kept trying to process it, though, but why, instead of a regular Yoshi game, is this a Yoshi diorama? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it's visually, visually great. Um, and I love that some of the enemies look like they're just made up of, like, folded paper. And they're trying to eat you. I don't know what's going on, plot-wise. No. But just... I, I have no idea. Um, Fire Emblem Warriors. Oh my god, that game looks so good. Was announced... Oh my god. So, so it's like Fire Emblem meets Dynasty Warriors. And, you know, I was a big fan... I'm a big fan of anything Dynasty Warriors except Dynasty Warriors. I've never played an actual... I, I do love when they apply other fandoms to Dynasty Warriors. Yeah, because I, I, I love that uh, that crossover type thing, because I, I love uh, I love Dynasty Warriors Gundam. Dynasty Warriors Gundam, yeah. fan. Dynasty Warriors I loved uh, Hyrule Warriors. Hyrule Warriors, Warriors was a lot yeah. of fun. I'm playing uh, Fate Extella right now. That's Fate Stay Night. Dynasty Fate Warriors. Fate Stay Night Extella. Bam. Yeah, but I've never played a single Dynasty Warriors game. I, I played one because I got to uh, uh, rent it out when I worked at GameStop. And because I think the reason is that without the connection to the characters. That's what it is. Yeah, without the connection to the characters. Um, you're, you're gonna run out of like you're, we're gonna run out of steam playing a Dynasty Warrior right. game because the gameplay is very repetitive. It is just a lot of running around and hitting people. You're, yeah, you're you're fighting what you know hordes and hordes of enemies, thousands of enemies, and you you know unlock the boss or whatever. You have to fight bosses. You have to clear the. I mean, it's it's very same sad. You're you playing know? definitely for the fandom, not for the story. Right, or the story, or even necessarily the gameplay. Um, but. Being able to play it with all the characters that you love from certain fandoms, that is where it comes in. Because, you know, you want to beat the crap out of thousands of enemies as Death Scythe, you know? Yes. You want to beat the crap out of thousands of enemies as your favorite Zelda characters. You want to fight thousands of enemies as Saber from Fate Stay Night, you know what I mean? So, I think that is the draw for me. Uh, and people, I know there are a lot of people that are big fans of Dynasty Warriors, and that's, you know, perfectly cool for you. That and you again, can, if that's your thing, do you, baby. Um, but... I mean, I love these crossovers. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so I think that Fire Emblem Warriors is going to be great. The only thing about Fire Emblem Warriors that I was a little bit disappointed with is that there was no Robin. And Robin is my favorite Fire Emblem character because he's a mage knight, he, or he's a strategist, but he uses a sword in one hand and a book in the other, and he's fighting with a sword and using magic at the same time, and that's just my jam. That is my jam, and I love the way he looks. Right. Slash she, depending on your canon. <laughs> because you can choose whether Robin is a male or female. Right. So, um, there was that. Uh, also, Nintendo did another announcement. I did not post a trailer for this on my Facebook page. But uh, they uh, they are doing a crossover with Mario and Rabbids. And it's going to be a Final Fantasy Tactics style RPG. Kind of uh, XCOM style. Uh, you know, tactical RPG. It, yeah, it, it looks great though. It looks like a lot of fun. He, uh, basically, Mario ends up in, the, in this Rabbids world with uh, some of the other Mario cast, and it's like, it looks like the Mario world, but there's rabid versions of the Mario characters, so he bumps into Rabid Peach, 
Uh, she, she dressed up as Princess Peach and she's got like the cell phone. And everything's always taking selfies. It's goofy. It's goofy, but it looks like a lot of fun. I see. You see the gears trying to like comprehend. It, it's not loading, guys. It's not, not loading in my brain piece. You know what? I'm going to take a break for a second so I can show him the trailer. A few moments later. Um. Yeah. That, yeah. So that's a thing. That was a thing. That yeah. exists. It looks like it's gonna be a, a funny game. It's very uh, colorful. But um, it, it's funny that they chose to do the the tactics RPG style thing. It looks like there's a lot of strategy involved, and um, you can find rabbit versions of pretty much all the Mario characters as well as the regular Tactic Mario style, characters. So it's a block. Yeah, you move by first square, and you're, you know, there's other mechanics to it. You know, you have to, you know, take cover for certain things. And why did we give Mario guns? <laughs> because, and it's funny how this came up. The um, Nintendo, when Ubisoft came to them with this idea, was like, you can use Mario, Mario in whatever way you want, but you can't jump. What? Because that's their thing. So, huh. thus they decided to go the uh, the gun approach. In this one, uh, and there's a, there's going to be a storyline reason why they need these specific blasters, or whatever, uh, or whatever. But um, yeah, no jumping in this one, specifically because it's not a Nintendo game specifically. So that is a thing. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I thought that was that was really funny. They also announced some uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild DLC. Um, you know, there's two DLCs coming out. There's one that's like the Master Trials. Right. So it's going to be, I guess, for people that are a little bit more hardcore or somebody that wants an extra challenge. Um, there's also another one that looks good. It's going to be called the Champion's Ballad, and it looks like it's more centric around Zelda and a cast of new, of new characters. Oh, cool. With, uh, dif uh, with the different races and stuff. And all these other characters and Zelda are going to have their own Amiibos. That's, yeah, the Amiibos look great. The Amiibos do look really great, and I love the bird-looking one. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry to all you hardcore Zelda fans that know all the names of these races, and you're yelling at me right now because I don't know the name of the bird race, but the bird one. Jeez, looks good. I, I mean, you're with the time. <laughs> I, I know the Gorons, okay, and I know the Zoras, but I don't remember the bird race. So, anyway, I'm sorry. Um, so, yeah, that's coming out. Uh, Rocket League is coming to Nintendo Switch, and it's going to be cross-play. So, when you're, if you get enough for a Nintendo Switch, and you want to play with the same people you've been playing as, uh, playing with on PC or on PS4, that's the thing. And it's already cross-play amongst the other players. I think so. Right? Yeah, I think so. I think our, <laughs> our brother, the Twitch streamer, Caleb Martin, mm -hmm. um, talks about all the time that, you know, when he sees a big skill level gap, he's like, that person's playing on console. Yeah. So, um, so there, that's coming out, and they're going to have some exclusive customizations and cars and stuff for the Switch version. That's cool. So you can have, you know, so you you see somebody driving around with the Mario cap, you know they're playing it on the Switch. Represent. Represent. Um, and the big trailer that came out, Super Mario Odyssey. Super Mario Odyssey looks really, really good. It looks pretty good, except for the the hat thing. <laughs> The hat thing, and it's funny how they how they said that the hat thing came out came up because they they were just playing playing around with different game ideas, and uh, somebody just said, well, what if you know you you had a hat that you threw at things and could you know possess them, and they developed it just a little bit enough to try it out, and they're like, this is a lot of fun. Let's make the whole game based off of this, and seeing it in action in gameplay, it looks like it it's really a lot of fun to play around with because it requires a lot of experimentation. You want to you know, see what it is that you can possess with your hat, and there's a lot of different results. Uh, I want to talk, uh, to talk a little bit about this one experience I saw um, in one of the big um, levels, the, the big city. It's like It looks like the way that this game works is that there are different worlds like that have like a central hub, you know? So the city is one of the central hubs, there's like a town in the desert kind of thing, and they all attach to different... Um, different well, stages that you actually have to go through. Like the museum in Mario 64. Yeah, exactly. But um, the city is huge and there's a lot to play around with. You know, you get little you know, storyline missions and stuff like that, or, you know, or little side missions. And um, one of the things is that somebody was running around 
uh, playing around with the hat, and he threw a hat at like a rocket that was sitting there, like it looked like a toy rocket, and he possessed it, and it blasted off into the sky, and it took him to a whole different like stage, like almost a bonus stage, so where he could collect some coins and stuff like that, and um, he got one of the, the special uh, tokens by doing that. So. Pretty neat. Yeah, so, I mean, it looks like it rewards you for just experimenting around. Uh, he says there's there's very little penalty for dying in this game. You know, you don't have a set amount of lives or, or anything like that. If you die, I think you lose, like, just a few coins. So, I think that's that's really interesting that they really encourage you to explore, and it looks like there's a lot to explore in this game. I mean, overall, the game looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, it looks very polished. I was uh, a little thrown off by the hat thing at first, but overall the it's game's got a gorgeous look to it. Yeah, I was the same. I was like, man, is he just possessing stuff with his hat? That's kind of weird. But seeing it in action and how it works, I think it were it's you know going to be a fun mechanic. And there's, I mean, this it's a whole new theme in this one too. Uh, Princess uh, Peach was kidnapped by Bowser as usual, but it's like she's being forced to marry him. And they have this whole like um, this whole movie trope thing where like the 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 woman is being forced to marry this, like you know, more high class guy uh, that she doesn't love, that she's not in love with, and you know he has the the nice white suit and everything, and he has hired this like group of villains to like make sure that their wedding goes according to plan. So there's new villains in this on top of the regular one. I forget what what he calls them, but it's like this group of people that take their job very seriously. A group of villains want to make sure that their wedding goes off without a hitch. But Mario, this working class guy, who is, you know, the one that actually is in love with the princess, you know, has to go in and stop the wedding, save the day, confess his love to Princess Peach. You know, that classic movie trope. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I object! Who objects? It's me, a mommy. <laughs> uh, but... So yeah, Mario Odyssey looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun. The song is uh, catchy. Yeah, it's pretty the, the theme song was, I was like, snapping along to it. Oh, another fun thing to note about the new Mario game is that coins will actually be used as coins in this game. What? Mind blown. Yeah, you get to uh, actually buy new outfits, and uh, there's a ship that you get that you can, you get buy things to customize your ship with. Oh, that's cool. Little souvenirs. Um, yeah, a lot of different things that you can buy with your coins. I don't think I've ever seen where you, I could buy something in any of the Mario games before. Yeah, so they have the regular coins, and then every area has its own currency. So, like, on top of uh, the regular coins, you'll be collecting these other purple coins, and they all have different shapes and stuff like that, and they're unique to that zone, and you use those to buy zone exclusive items. That's cool. So, I think that's, that's really neat. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I think that's... I'm really, I'm really looking forward to, pl to playing that on the Switch once I get a Switch. Mm -hmm. Looks like a lot of cool stuff coming up for the Nintendo. I think Nintendo had a lot of great announcements. It looks, it looks, you know, like the Switch is going to be one of the devices to have in the next year. Like one of the biggest devices to have in the next year. You know, being able to play all these great games on the go. It's just, man, they need to produce more. Like the, the second they make Switches, they're gone like that. Indeed. So, yeah, anyway, is there anything else you want to talk about? No, that's all the stuff I'm really excited for uh, uh, some Xenoblade. I'm really excited for some Breath of the Wild and DLC, you know. So I, I'm, I think this is going to be cool. And then, of course, I'm really excited for fun stuff like Kirby, Mario, you know, your classics. You know, you're, you're never too old for the family-friendly games of Nintendo. I mean, they're, they're focused on fun, and I think that they, they do a great job with that. Indeed. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please do hit trigger with that thumbs up button down below. It really and truly means a lot more to me than you guys know. Do you ever drop some comments too? Let's talk about any and all of these awesome looking Nintendo games. I love hearing from you guys. I just love chatting with you guys. It really and truly makes my day. If you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, I can speak today. I would love to have you guys as a member of the Dark Light family and hope we'll continue this YouTube journey together again very, very soon. And until then, may your dreams light your darkest hour. And I'll see you next time.